good morning, everybody. I feel very much honored to be with you here, and thank you for IUGS to have done and realized this project. It's amazing to be you here, and I'm very happy to present in behalf of my colleagues and managing director of the non-for-profit Messel Pitt Company, together with my colleague Pascal Schmitz, with the colleagues from the Geological Survey, Anne Kött, and the colleagues from the scientific institutions, Dr. Thorsten Wappler and Dr. Sonja Wedmann from Senckenberg and the Hesse State Museum, and with my colleague, Dr. Jutta Weber, the Messel Pit stories, because we are not yet having Eocene paleontological record of Messel Pit fossil site. We have a location in the heart of Europe, as you can see, and many of you may know this territory, which is the Geopark territory. We are south from Frankfurt Airport. Many of you have already been at Frankfurt, I guess. So next time, please come over. We are happy to welcome you. And we are northeast from Darmstadt, where the Hesse State Museum is. And in Frankfurt, we have the Senckenberg Museum and Research Institute. And you see, the Geopark is a much larger area, about 3,800 square kilometers. And we are in the northern part. And you see the northern part here in a 3D model. And the Messel Pit is located here as the yellow dot. And we are part of the Sprentlinger Horst a tectonic area formed after uh, the Odenwald became a mountain belt about 340 to 290 million years ago during the Verestrian Orogeny. And in Paleogene, in Eocene, at Epression Lutetian time, it became, became part of a faulting system when the Alpine region ascended to become a new mountain belt. Today we are at the northeastern shoulder of the upper Rheingraben, which is this area, and you see here the tectonic elements that exist. They exist also here. And this brought the Messel Pit at the Sprentlinger Horst into a very exciting situation not from the landscape of today. You see here, this is a view from the UNESCO Global Geopark Bergstraße Odenwald into the northern direction. And these are some of the famous oceans of rocks in the geopark. But the Messel Pit itself in this area, you see it here again. We are quite a distance from the crystalline rocks of the UNESCO Global Geopark. And at Eocene time, you see here, these are the folds that still exist. There was an opening at um, the surface of the Earth, and by uh, rifting activities, this area became um, in a climatic paratropical zone uh, into a volcanic territory. And when did you... Um, and a volcanic territory formed, which we know today from recent activities in this area, the volcanic field was much larger than we see it today. And uh, by these activities, uh, the uh, Mar Volcano crater was formed, and scientists think it was about two to 300 meters deep. But since then, this landscape and territory is under erosion, and the tectonic processes tell, finally, by the results recently we got, that at least 300 meters of the landscape disappeared up to today. So what we see today is a residue landscape with a deep, down-eroded volcanic feature of a larger field. Here you see a three-dimensional model, and this is the impression you would have had when you would have been at the Messel Pit about 47.71 to 48.11 million years ago when the Mar Volcano erupted. And you see here from the sections given that quite this landscape here is missing today. In 2001, we had a spectacular scientific project that drilled down in 
the metal pit down to 433 meters. And by this scientific project, a totally new conformation of the formation of the metal pit was established because before nobody thought about being the metal pit as a crater of volcanic origin. So this was how it looked like in a rainforest environment. But today, these are the pictures you see from Indonesia. And the volcano was afterwards having a lake functioned as a fossil trap for organisms during a time period of probably 1.5 million years ago, or long, sorry. And yesterday, we have seen a fantastic coast here in Somaya having five kilometers with 50 million years time at the metal pit, whoops, sorry. Within this lake, we have a filling of 1.5 million years, which is filled with mammals, snakes, turtles, whatever you like, not only one ecosystem, the lake system, the boundary to the tropical forest and the tropical forest around. Let me give you some examples from the oil shale where the fossils are kept in, which is a former algae slug, and it contains a tremendous inventory and development of organisms over about this time span during the EUC in Epoch, during a greenhouse climate. The fossils were preserved in an oxygen free water layer at the bottom of the lake. And you see here our primeval metal pit horse. It is here really a giant size. It's nice to see it that giant, but it's just like a dog size in original size. And this is, we have heard a lot about giant trilobites, but the values and the treasures are different we all know that as geoscientists, but we need to transfer this also to the audiences. And since several years, we have new topics like the insects, for example. And you see here some main elements for the mesal pit with the unique quality we have by complete skeletons, soft tissue preservation, feathers shown in patterns, traces of behavior, insect feeding traces in leaves, pollen in stomachs of birds and flies, or crocodile teeth in horse bones. You see, it's fantastic. And especially, you also see nutrient change, chains. And you see the number of species discovered by the different groups is really amazing. The mesal pit is also important for Eocene holoarctic mammalian faunas. Sometimes fossiled, fossilized feathers show patterns like here, but these are not the patterns. Some beetles and true bugs show 48 million old structures, colors like this. These are no pigment colors. These are reflection colors. We see by the fantastic conservation status of the bodies of the insects. The jewel beetle, Silopteria weigelti from Senkenberg, and the Mesalhopi, Mesalirisor grandis from the Hesse State Museum, are two of these fantastic examples. But many new species have been described, and a lot of unique fossils have been excavated because excavation work is going still on also since the metal pit became a world heritage site in 1995. So we, you see here some fantastic things from insects, especially got by scientific investigations during the last 10 years. The scientific tradition started already at the end of the 19th century, as you can see here in 1877, First crocodile pieces were found by Ludwig and Haupt then in 1911 investigated the first primeval horse finding. You see some of the paintings of Ludwig here and Haupt. 
And then there is like a gap. But it was not easy to conserve these fossils because at that time no methodology existed to keep them in total. Regular ex excavation started then in the 1960s onwards, first by the Hesse State Museum in Darmstadt and then by the Senckenberg Museum in Frankfurt from 1975 onwards. And they led to a new research push and in total in 2004, the colleagues had about 1,473 scientific publications. So that's quite amazing. And you see some examples of what they investigated, like the crocodiles, fish as a main group that was found in a lake, but also bats. More than 800 bats findings exist and have been investigated. And by new methodologies, it is known now that in Messel you have the oldest bat population worldwide, as it seems. Currently, there is a regular excavation team working from May to September, as well as from Senckenberg, as also from the Hesse State Museum. And since 2004, the colleagues have published about 600 new scientific publications yeah. on different teams and when you count it, it's about 35 per year what they do. That's amazing. Our minister from Federal Foreign Office in Berlin visited us last year, and she was quite impressed by the technical skills, by the topics, and also the sensitivity of these fossils. And the topics changed during the research time we have had. So, but already in early times, the crocodile skeleton pieces showed that there was a greenhouse climate. And when I talked about stories on the Messel pit, it is not only the stories of the fossils we have. We also have a story because up to today, none of us would know about the Messel pit if we would not have had the discovery of a lignit area at the end of the 19th century, which was then opened and excavated. And you see this quarry, an open air quarry, in the 1920s. And it's amazing, and you see here some data that first, well, they needed the material as um, to produce oil, petrol. At that time, this was a huge need for the local people and the society. From the 1884 to the 1960s, then you see here by the small number of scientific publications, well, they found pieces and today the colleagues from the research institute say, oh my God, how much did we lose? Yes, true, but people did not know better. Then from 2004 to 2021, about 508 scientific publications were realized. And it's amazing because in 2020, colleagues showed that also pythons and boas coexisted at Meselpit in the Eocene time. But this number of 2000 publications is quite amazing and impressive, I think. And you see one of the normal sites where the colleagues dig at. This is the dark black oil shale. And you have here what I said about one meter of this oil shale material, the former algae mud, is about 10,000 to 15,000 years time. So when you visit, think of one meter climbing, you have 10 to 15,000 years behind you walking on the oil shale. But it is the richest ge geocide in the world for understanding the living environment of the Eocene, as it includes exceptionally well-preserved fossils in an algae, algae slug, today being the black bituminous pellet, the oil trail. 
Eocene was an epoch in the evolution of life on Earth when mammals became firmly established in all the principal land ecosystems and took two to the air. The mesal period provides a single best site which contributes to the understanding of this period. It is a window into this time. We just look at it and everything is in front of us. So it will truly be preserved by the research activities and also by the regular visitor access we do. In general, we have about, since 2010, a new visitor center. And by this, our visitor numbers by guided tours are around 30 to 35,000 people. And this is what the colleagues before have already mentioned. We need to talk to the society, to the young people. They need to follow our passion. They need to experience a passion on all these topics. So, thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you, thank you, Marie Louise, for your great presentation.